All right, today we're continuing our talk uh, about thermodynamics by talking about specific heat. Now, I know all of you have seen this formula before in chemistry. Q equals M times C times delta T. C is our specific heat. Uh, that's probably all you used it for. I'm going to talk about it in a little bit different way than maybe you've seen before. So, specific heat for a substance is... Um, the substance's resistance to a change in temperature. Um, I like to think of it as thermal inertia. If an object has a large specific heat, its temperature is not going to change very much when you when you add heat to it. If it has a low specific heat, it will. So um, metals typically have a low meat. Metals typically have a low specific heat. Uh, water has a high specific heat. We use a C to talk about specific heat. Um, the way it works is if you put a little bit of heat into a metal, its temperature changes a lot. However, if you put a little bit of heat into water, its temperature doesn't change very much at all. Um, usually we measure specific heat uh, in this class in units of joules per gram Kelvin. And, and what it means is this many joules will weigh one gram of the substance one degrees Kelvin. Um, so for something like iron, we have a low specific heat, something close to 0 0.45 joules to raise one gram one degree Kelvin. Whereas water has a high specific heat. Its temperature doesn't change very quickly. It takes 4.18 joules to weigh, raise one gram of that one degree Kelvin. So, um, metal and a block of wood at room temperature. So each object has the same temperature. 73 degrees Fahrenheit. I have no idea what that is in Celsius. So each thing has the same temperature. But if you were to hold the metal, it would feel cold. If you were to hold the wood, it, it feel normal, I guess. Possibly even warm compared to the metal. Now the reason for that is, okay, looking at it, this has a lower specific heat, this has a higher specific heat. When you hold on to the metal, it's going to readily accept heat from you, and its temperature is actually going to change faster than the wood. But it feels cold because when you put your hand around it, that's, that's your hand, I guess, Heat flows readily from your hand into the metal. It wants to accept that heat. However, when you hold the wood, um, heat doesn't transfer to that as quickly. Because it has a higher specific heat, it's resisting that change in temperature, whereas the metal is not. We're going to look at that tomorrow. Another thing that we do with specific heat is something called calorimetry. Uh, basic calorimetry, you have a beaker. You fill the beaker with water, and then you take something hot, some hot metal, and you know the temperature of it, and you dunk it into the water. You also know the temperature of the water. At some later time, the temperature of the metal and the temperature of the water are equal. They've transferred heat until they're in thermal equilibrium. They have the same temperature. Um, and what we see is a big delta T for the metal and a smaller delta T for the water because of the differences in specific heat. Now we know that heat went from the metal into the water. That's the place where the heat went. And we use this equation, Q, heat, is equal to mass times specific heat times the change in temperature. So if I want to know how much heat the piece of metal lost, I calculate. If I want to know how much heat the water gained, I can calculate. 
Uh, conversely, if we don't know the specific heat of an object, we can look at how much heat the water gains and work backwards to find the specific heat of the metal. We're going to do a calorimetry lab um, in class tomorrow, and what you're going to see next is a demonstration of that calorimetry lab. Okay, this is a calorimetry experiment. What we're going to do is take iron, that's this little block here, 50 grams of it at 200 degrees Celsius, so that thing starts off iron with an initial temperature of 200 degrees Celsius. I'm going to drop it into 100 grams of water, that's here, that's at 20 degrees Celsius. For the water, our initial temperature is going to be 20 degrees Celsius. And when we drop it in, this is going to measure the temperature of the whole thing, and we're going to, we're going to see what happens with that energy stored in the, in the iron. So, let's see how it goes, if it'll start. Yeah, there it goes. Alright, so as it's in there, the temperature rises up and continues to rise up and rise up until we get to a place where it levels off. The temperature stays at 29.2425 degrees Celsius. So, our final temperature for the iron is 29.24 degrees Celsius and the final temperature for the water is the same thing, 29.24 degrees Celsius. So we're going to use our formula and look at the heat loss or gain for each one. So let's look at the heat transferred for the iron. We've got M C delta T. So we're going to take 50 grams times the specific heat of iron which is point zero point four five two, uh, and that's in units of joules per gram Kelvin times the difference in my temperature. Now it doesn't matter if we're in Celsius or Kelvin if we're taking a difference. So 29.4, sorry, 29.24 minus 200. And that's all in Celsius. So the grams and the Kelvins go away because of the Kelvin here. And we're left with a heat loss in this case of 3,860 joules. Now if we look at the same thing for the water, what we're hoping to see is, is the same amount of heat transfer. So that's going to be the mass of the water, 100 grams, times the specific heat of water, 4.18 joules per gram Kelvin, times the change in temperature, uh, 29.24 minus 20 degrees Celsius. And what we get there, and you can calculate it on your own, is something very close to positive 3,860 joules. What's happening is that the heat stored in here goes out into the water and it picks up exactly the amount of heat that we lose. And we're going to do a lab very similar to this uh, Monday in class. But what we're going to do um, is have an unknown piece of metal. So we're going to try to find the specific heat. Now, if iron had had less specific heat, it wouldn't have lost as much energy. It wouldn't have changed temperature as much. Um, We'll play with that more on Monday. So, wait. I don't know how to stop this now. Ah! That's enough. <laughs>